Anderson's TV, Hello. everybody. It's New Gear Day today with our New friends Gear. from Blackstar. Uh, yes, goodness me. I think we sold a lot of HT1s, HT5s, and certainly a few HT20s over the years. When did that first come out? Well, HT5, that's my, that, is a, that was my introduction to, to Blackstar. The, the, you know, the Rob I'm Chatton talking... video, was he playing that in that big, was that well, the one, was it? Yeah, he's standing when, in the... when Blackstar first started, Chatters. and again, many of you probably, you know, won't even realise that, you know, Blackstar was a sort of a uh, three or four guys who, who left Marshall, broke away to, dis, you know, to start their own amp company. And the very first amps were those red coloured yeah, artisans, all oh, yeah. hand wired, quite boutique-y. Mm. And then Lovely. I think they did a couple of pedals and, and Andersons weren't a Blackstar dealer at this time. And then they released the HT5. The Mark One version. Yeah, you've got the Mark Three version there. Mark you? Three? Similar size. Wow. And it was the first sort of sensibly priced, really well featured, had DI output for recording. It was a really good sounding little yeah. one, ten, 110, I think the original mm -hmm. one was. 110 too. And I remember phoning a guy called Keith Dudley, who, bless him, he's no longer with us anymore, but one of the nicest oh. guys you'll ever meet in the music industry and said, Please, Keith, can, can Andersons be a black star dealer? And he's like, oh, I don't know about that, Lee. It's like, in fact, he had a he was from Wolverhampton. Oh god! Uh, yeah, so yeah, I, I won't try and do deal that. Uh, <laughs> Keith Dudley, Dudley. <laughs> okay. I, I can't do the accent. Uh, and he was like, I'm not so sure, Lee. You know, you've got Guitar Village not too far away there. Black star dealer. I'm not sure. And I'm like, please, please, please. <laughs> Eventually, convinced him we should be a black star dealer. But I've got um, Rob Chapman. Yeah. He said. And then I think some of those early videos with Drew, the iconic boom. Oh my God. Boom. We should have that now. Go and find that clip, Oz. Boom. Oh my boom. Goodness me, we've sold thousands of HT5s over the years. And then yeah, that, yeah. that range expanded. And of course, you've got a one and a five and a 20 and a 40 and a 60 and a 100 and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, anyway, yeah. everyone will know about Blackstar now. They're not new. So last year you saw the venue, the HT venue series mm -hmm. yeah, go from Mark II to Mark III. If you don't remember that video, you want to find out more about that, there'll be links below, maybe it's up there. Uh, and now they've uh, upgraded uh, the one, the five and the 20 to Mark III. They look very different. I like the new logo. I love that. The new vinyl covering looks yeah. very, very classy. Expensive. Um, it does look expensive. Yep. Uh, in terms of features, you're going to see uh, some enhanced voicing across both channels. Uh, you're going to see US, uh, USB-C uh, outputs now, so you can now um, use Architect and Cab Rig in a way that you could never do mm -hmm. on the previous HT. Previous HT had an analog DI output with no okay. software interface. You know, it was just this one is a just button that was like, this is a 112 or a 412. Now you can do all sorts here. And we've got upgraded reverbs. We've got, um, I don't think there's any different actual knobs on here, but as we go through, we'll see. We've got the 10% the uh, power mode. Yeah, so whatever cool. its Great full problem. output is, you can yeah. drop it down to 10%. So I think that's about, uh, about, it. It's the, about what's time. new. So let's just hear stuff. That, yeah. that opening jam was Pete through the 20 into the 212 and me through the five into the 112. You got any pedals on, Mr. Pete? Uh, no, no pedals on. I, right. Can I just point out, I've mm. always loved the design of these because this bit here is sort of raised up a little bit. It's very clever, so, isn't it? It's very clever. That's, that is definitely... I didn't really notice that before, but I've always, I th think it's such so a good the, idea. So the front that feet like are slightly taller than the back feet, which just angles the head up. Yeah. Very clever. I don't, know if it it, is I don't think the combos do that no. as well, do they? I think no. it's just for it's the just, heads. Yeah, just for this so, head, by the way. Just did hit this, that head, yeah. The 20 is the first one, or it's the only one out of the three that I think you valve purists out there will go, oh yeah, that's a conventional kind of use of the of the power tube. So this is two EL84s in here okay. with two ECC83s in the preamp section. Classic. When we go into the smaller ones, they're, they're using some more unusual valves in the power section. We'll talk about that. Does that say like and subscribe there as well? I think it does. That, that second bullet point down, isn't yeah, it? I think, yeah, like, like that's subscribe. it, like and subscribe. Yeah. Uh, and just underneath that, I think it says every 10,000 new subscribers we're giving away prizes. It does. So it does it say does. that. Holy Thanks. Smokes. Well reminded. Okay. Okay, so if we zoom in on here, we've got a clean channel with two voices. We've got an overdrive channel with two voices. We've got a three band EQ with ISF that works for the overdrive section. We've got reverb, which again is you can change using the, uh, no, can taste the software. Yeah. yeah, for each channel, for reverb and uh, for the clean. And we've the got master channel. volume. We've got a power attenuation switch at the is end Is this here. bigger now? 
Or is it just me? Is that bigger? Is this whole bit here bigger? It looks slightly bigger to I'm me. Not sure, sure. Maybe it's just a bit more in your face then. Um, with the logo, maybe. We'll do a sweep of the back as well. There's quite a bit of stuff on the back, but I think as you see it, it'll be pretty self explanatory. So let's have our clean tone, please, Mr. Pete. Yep. Everything on 12, voice one. I've set the decay and the reverb with the app that went into the uh, architects to make this. We are arguing longer. with Blackstar. They are arguing internally. <laughs> they argue amongst what, themselves. That obviously, there's a default <laughs> reverb that these will come with yeah. out the box, which as of today is not the one that we like the best. We like the one with the slightly longer DK. Yeah. So who knows between now and when these are but, launched but, whether but Blackstar can, will change that. But, but you can set it, but it's not. It's set for the shorter decay. Yes. But you can go in... And change it, that's what I've yeah. done here. So. In fact, you can actually have a different reverb for each channel, which yeah. is very clever. Yeah. But well, anyway, yes, like so we've changed it to the longer decay reverb. Uh, well, keep, keep playing. Yeah. We've got no pedals, right? What's happening here? I'm not sure. I don't know. What's I, don't, I, think your, I think your C chord is in the wrong position. No, it's I just Monday, know. isn't it? Right, here we go. It was just this chord I was going to play. Turn the reverb up a bit, just to see what happens on it. Nice. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, voice it's lovely two. Clean tone. Voice two, if I remember rightly, sort of... Um, Takes a little bit of the bass end of the way, uh, pushes the mid range the a little bit more. Away, yeah. yeah, the bass <laughs> end of the way. It's Italian uh, voice switch. Um, <laughs> <laughs> try it. <laughs> more mid range. Yeah, here, I it? think. It's just another classic kind of clean tone. Oh, he's having less reverb. Yeah. Controversial. Controversial. Convolution. Can't have that little. You have more. No, I don't. Yeah, a little bit more. A little bit more. There you go. A little bit more. <laughs> Back where it was. A little bit more. A little bit more. Just a little bit less. A little bit less. A little bit less. A little bit more. <laughs> I'm like the A&R guy that's in the band. He's sitting there. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Just go away, man. Nice. That's, bit of crunch. That's, yeah, there's nothing on here, but I think that sort of second. It's got a little, it's a little bit more crunch, pushed, isn't it? Mid, mid yeah. push crunch. Oh, it's great. That sounds great, man. So you don't get the EQ, that only works on the drive channel, so yeah. it's got a tone control here. Yeah. So we can just show you the extent of that. It does got tone control yeah. things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it does. Um, yeah. <laughs> let's jump over to channel duh. So it's this we voice that channel. clean channel. They are all well. slightly it sounds great. Yeah, it sounds does. really nice. Uh, so we're gonna start with not a lot of gain. Not a lot of gain. So you can use the master in this as well. You can when I'm saying use it, please turn it off. <laughs> Sounds great. It's like a good rock and yeah, roll yeah, kind yeah, of uh, tone. Still no pedals. If I wind the gain in, obviously goes more sax. <laughs> Nice. 
nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, improvements here. Um, as I said at the beginning, the HT20 combo, the 112 version of that, in the room, obviously you're going to hear a difference between a 212 cabinet and a, and a 112. Yeah, yeah, 212. Uh, if is... you use the um, DI output, the architect software, all that kind of stuff, it'll be identical. So I imagine HT20 will appeal to people that perhaps want to take a feed out to the PA and oh, just use head? that as a What's on stage monitor. That's yeah, that. that 20 head, so you just get the head. Oh, don't I mean, have a cab at no, all. If, you, if you're using it at home a lot, then you mm. can use that straight out. You don't, and then have a 112 cab or something. Yeah. I mean. Uh, right, second voice on the overdrive. <laughs> More clear top end. It does, sound good. Upgrades, it, it does sound good. Yeah. I think being. Um, I mean, the old one sounded good. This has got next this next level. Yeah, be, being you know trying to be sort of helpful if you if you're gigging out there. I definitely feel like the twenty is the only one out of these three that would keep up with the drummer unless you were miking up the, the yeah. five. If you really really gun everything, might just about get you in it's that kind of range. You, the headroom. Uh, obviously, the, the one is is not for that sort of thing. The one is very much a, a home use thing. Or, or, but again, you could di them all if you wanted to, yeah. and then it's as loud as your PA is. Let's mess around with the EQ, especially ISF. We always sort of zone in on this as a nice little sort of filtered EQ that yeah. uh, takes the amp from sounding a bit more British to a bit more American. Um, like I said before, only works on the gain channel. So. Touch responsive as well. Obviously. See, it's great, it's 12 o'clock, man. Boom, that's what it is. Let's see, I'm just rolling down the volume now. Don't turn it down. I thought you never turn, turn it down. A bit, bit more reverb, please. A little bit more reverb. A little bit, little bit more. A little bit more. Little, little, that's it. Uh. Good. Let's just Not do the, we'll do the little two watt, the 10% mode. So if you just play a big chord. So that's, that's, a great, that's a super handy feature. Uh, is there anything on the back that's worth talking about? I always about? break those switches off because I never need to watch. Why can't I ever walk around my chair? Right. No, the wrong way. Other way. Right. What have we got there? Okay, on the back is our USB-C. Um, we have to say goodbye now. We official funeral music for the old printer port that used to be on the back of these. USB uh, ancient. Foot switch, two button foot switch that comes with it on the HT20. Effects loop, send and return with a level control, a line input, uh, like a mini jack line input. Three memory settings for your cab rig output. Obviously you can have millions of different settings if through the software, but you save the three that you want to use for here. Headphone socket, 
It's pretty cool. So you just need um, the head then. Yeah, I mean, we've, either a, a we've got either we've got a XLR output and a jack output. We've got speaker outputs, and then we've just got the mains output. So there we are. Is that the same on the five? Uh, yeah, pretty much the same on the five, less on the one. We'll do a question that in a minute. for anyone in the room or anybody out there. What does anyone ever plug a mini jack into their head like that? Well, like, you, like, like, like I know. An, an iPod. Is you that can't a thing? really anymore, can you? Is that a thing? If you haven't got Bluetooth, if you haven't got a, you have to try and find that little connect and connector thing that if you have an iPhone, lost. yeah, but yeah. you know, if you're still on, a, on, a, on an Android, then you're fine. So that's the twenty combo is the one down there, so you can kind yeah. of see the relative size <laughs> difference. Um, Money-wise, I think it's seven nine nine for the combo, seven forty nine for the head. That's a good price compared to what other heads you get. You know, if you get a 20 watt, is it 20 watt? Yeah, so um, of course it's 20 watt. <laughs> it's not a bad price. No, it's, it, it's, it's very competitive for all the features. Yeah. All right, uh, let's take you through. Well, no, I'll tell you what, before we move on, can we just go back to the clean channel and hear how it takes pedals? Pedals. Okay, that's so a that, big sound. That's a big clean sound, isn't it? I think we turned it up a little bit there. But... Put a stack Kelly, Kelly 76. Just lifts it a little bit. That's Dane. El Cabistan. Um, and a bit more gain from the protein. Sounds great, man. And it's safe to say that it doesn't mind a pedal or two. Nope. That's great. Okay, so That's we're going good. over to the five. As you can see, it's a little bit more compact than the 20. Uh, is that because we've lost any controls here? So we don't have a master volume on overall. We still we just have the volumes on the channels. Other than that, though, it looks like we've got everything else. I tell you what, man, um, sorry to interrupt there. 20 on that 112 cab there. <laughs> yep. And these have got the little plates you can take off on the back, right? So you can be an open back cab on. Which is so clever. It is a clever idea. It's a very idea. clever idea. Um, now, the 5 is the first one that... Uh, now, this, this isn't new in fairness. The 5 has done this from day one. Uh, but it uses a valve called the 12BH7, which is kind of a little bit bigger <laughs> than a... Yeah, a little bit <laughs> bigger than a preamp tube, not as big as a traditional style power amp tube. So it uses that, a single one of those, to get the um, 5 watts out of it. And then it has a single ECC83 in the preamp. Mm. Um, I... We'll go back to my clean tone and just start that. So I'm running this through the 112 cab, which is a um, Blackbird 50 speaker in it, which is a, a, a Blackstar's own kind of speaker design. It's pushing that nicely. Obviously, I've got humbuckers, so I am going to probably push it. Let me just take the volume down a little bit Do on it. these. This is such a great volume for someone that wants to play at home, have a little bit more power than you might get out of a traditional conventional practice amplifier. Yeah. And it's just about pokey enough that it'll do a rehearsal or something like that. The yeah. DI output, I think, is unbelievably useful. I remember doing HT5 customer events with Jamie Humphreys back in the day. And again, <laughs> HT5, DI into a little Bose yeah, PA yeah. system. Super yep. loud, play to 100 people, backing track, whatever. It sounded great, but. Yep. I have got my volumes rolled back a bit here. Uh, I've got the same idea of two voices. I won't do the same again, because you get the idea. It's, it's essentially just a slightly more uh, pushed mid-range sound on that clean sound. Let's have a listen to the overdrive. Mm. Um, 
I don't think I wasn't using any, no I did, I was using a pedal for the second part of the jam, but... <laughs> A good rock and roll sound. That's the gain pretty low. Voice one. Uh, let's just wind the gain up a bit. That's a great sound. And it's not loud enough that it's gonna you know it's loud enough that you feel like you're in a rock band pushing some air but it's not yeah. that loud i don't even know what we're clipping on the oh we're not even at 85 there are we 90 some yeah but i think you, that's this is where you don't have to uh, master that's where you need your little two watt switch isn't it for home well i've got well no i've got volume and gain on the um yeah but an overall master i haven't got an overall you're right yeah uh uh, what I did do in that opening oh, jam do -do. was I put my Tumnus pedal, which I oh. use always as a, like a lead boost thing. So that's, this is just the Black Star sound. And this is with the pedal. Sounds great. Um, what else? EQ is the same, so we've still got ISF. Here's my 0.5 of a watt. A point mode. Five. I kind of feel sometimes you can go so quiet on an amplifier that it doesn't move the speaker enough to really give you that sort of. Yeah. It's still like a you good might as well sound. turn it down, right? Well, there is all, yeah, it. I suppose that's you could always just go. Yeah, it's just a good point that one, Pete. It's loads of amps do that kind of, you know, yeah, ten percent mode. Just, if you've got, and then turn it down. Like, <laughs> might not just turn it down. <laughs> is there a difference? There is a difference. Yeah. Oh look, the voice there came oh. in. There is a difference. <laughs> Maybe it's a bit more compressed. <laughs> Anyway, so that's the five, mm, and again, if Pete wants to hold up. Um, yeah, I can't lift this. It's quite substantial. I'm, so Pete's mm. holding up the five now, so you, which you can get as a combo as opposed to a head and a cab. I imagine the combo probably will be the more popular one. It's the same speaker in the 112 extension cabinet and that amplifier. So I don't imagine there'll be any real tonal difference between what I've just played here and just buying the You could combo. have this on top of that cab. Yeah, absolutely. You can That's use these as an up. extension cab for those as well if you want to. Mm -hmm. So let's just plug the one in. Uh, do you want to go for the one here? It is. You've got the one. Yeah. So we're going to use the one. That's a good idea because I think if we use the one into the bigger cabinet, it'll probably give you a slightly misleading sense of how the combo sounds. So we'll try the combo. That's got an eight inch speaker in it. Uh, and I'm very has, familiar with that size. <laughs> I'm sure you aren't. Yeah. Uh, and um, <laughs> this has got... Okay, so we've got volume and gain with, again, your two different voices and a switch to select overdrive or not. Then we've just got a simple EQ control. Uh -huh. uh, we've got reverb. We've still got the three cab rig settings. We've still got line in. Uh, and we can still use a foot switch with it as well. That's pretty cool. And you've still got the USB output. That is such a dinky little it is. <laughs> that one, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, so coming from this to this, you know, don't have any big expectation for the little speaker like this, but here we are. Uh, a bit of EQ, ISF all the way down. This is clean. The reverb. Again, uh, I haven't said it. I oh, have done that one, okay. No. Uh, EQ 12 o'clock. Uh, 
such a dinky little. The HT1 it, is so dinky, isn't it? I think always these little amps, you just need to go. Just handed me the specs because I forgot what it was. So yeah, we've got an ECC83 in uh, being used in the preamp, and ECC82 uh, in the power section. So it's almost got like a, it's almost like it had a, a preamp tube converted into a power amp. Let me just tube. do the voices here. I've got to do the voices here. Yeah. So clean channel again. It's voice one, voice two. So similar to that, where it goes. Gain down, volume all the way up. Everything all the way up, let's see how loud it goes. Clean, with everything up. Ooh, it didn't like that very like much, did it? Nope. It's too much gain in it, isn't it? So sort of gain back. This is a tiny amp, man. What is this, an eight inch here? Eight inch speaker, so, yeah. I think I, I may have forgotten to tell you how much uh, the HT5 was. So, uh, but HT1 now is 399 for the combo, 349 for the head. Uh, the HT5 is 599 for the combo, 549 for the head. Cabs? I uh, can't remember. They'll all be in the links <laughs> below. Uh, in fact, always worth diving over to the links below. Absolutely. Prices can fluctuate, obviously, over time. Absolutely. So go and check the links below. You can dive on over to the Anderson's website. That's my favorite, um, though. It's great, man. It you like good. that one? Yeah, I like the... All, everything is... I just... Just, my gut feeling is the HT5 will be the most popular one. Uh, I think you're right. The HT20 is the best sounding one. Was it 200 quid more? Yeah, I just think it's people will love paper, the right? people will love the, the 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 size of the HT5 and the fact that it's such a, it's not a that great much home bigger. Use. Come on, no, I mean the volume size of it. For oh, home the use. volume size. Yeah. Okay, so everything you've heard so far has been miking up speakers and in the real world. Now we're going to move into the realm of digital fantasy um, and show you what these sound like di'd. Okay, so uh, you're going to see a combination of Pete playing and, and the screen recording off here now. So we've got this laptop connected to the HD20 via mm. USB. Uh, this is the software called Architect. You can see the left-hand section is about the speaker and the mic um, that we're going to emulate here. Uh, the middle section is the uh, reverb type effect that you're hearing in the room. And on the right here, we've got this idea of uh, some power amp drive. It's obviously an emulation of power amp drive, which is pretty cool. That's very cool. Uh, so it's very, very, very simple to use. If I click the icon of the speaker cabinet, uh, you'll see all your different speaker cabinets come up here. Uh -huh. uh, you, you can, in fact, elect just to have a straight DI output, and then I guess you'd be using a secondary uh, piece of emulation software. Mm. Uh, but yeah, you've got here about 20 different types of cabinet, um, and it's just a question of literally clicking one to sort of see. In fact, if I move this window out the way, you can even see on the big screen the cabinet changes. Oh, clever. So should we just hear a couple of different, you know, sort of like, I don't know, like, but like a, here's a 112 uh, Alnico combo. Nico. Does he work in the shop? In the uh, yeah, absolutely. Arms, yeah. yeah. Definitely. And also, we just have a... pointing out, worth pointing out. I can get my words out. Words out. You just pull the speaker lead out, and it stands by the amp. Don't worry about it. Yeah, that's so, very cool. Easy. So yeah, we're not hearing, all and we're hearing in the room is the same as what you're hearing. So we're just all hearing now the amp through our studio yeah. monitors. I, I have indeed, in fact, realized that the room thing on Architect here is uh, in addition to yeah. the... Re so so the, the, the room setting 
uh, on architect software, you can see from this drop down menu here, isn't really necessarily traditional like reverbs as such. There's no plate reverb or anything like that. It's just here are a selection of spaces that you want to use. And then you use that in conjunction with the reverb that's built into the mm. amplifier as well. So we might as well just leave that on a medium room. Medium. Right, let's go back. Let's hear some other cabs. Let's try a 212, uh, let's try a 212 USA combo. USA. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's where you're, woof. This is now a 410 open back, like a basement or something. Oh, it's a 412. This is probably more suited to a higher gain sound. This yeah. is a 412. I mean, you can do back that, to that all day long. I'll go back to that 212 like USA combo. Did you? All right, we'll I go like on the 410. 410. That's really a nice sound. So. That's choosing the cab. And again, I think you'll have some fun here just experimenting, seeing what you like. Different types of uh, tone will uh, suit different types of cabs better. You can then change the microphone. So you see you've got six different microphones here. Uh, each, um, the, the position of the microphone is fixed, but you can select whether it's uh, on axis or off yeah, axis. Make it easy for people, man. Yeah, so you were hearing that with a dynamic mic, a 421, I think it's a Sennheiser microphone. You might decide, what is that like? What does that sound like with a ribbon microphone? Nice and full and fat and juicy. With a traditional 57. You've got some condensers here. Again, that is for same, you to same idea here. The Just home, isn't it? Yeah. mess around until you get a sound that you like. Um, I'm sure you'll, great. you'll very quickly end up with your favourite cab for an overdrive yeah. sound and your favourite cab for a clean sound. Has it still got the little uh, uh, dice? Uh, oh yeah, so you used to have like a uh, random tr thing. Yeah, it has, absolutely, like up in the corner. So if you're really, really devoid of inspiration, press the dice and you get some random combination. The room bit in the middle here is uh, probably not going to have as much impact on, on these sounds as it might do. The reason being, we're using the mono DI output from the back of the amplifier yeah. rather than actually recording out of the yeah. USB. If we were recording out of the USB, we'd get the full stereo uh, effect of, of the room and the, and the reverbs and stuff. Yeah. But we're not, we're not getting Headphone that. output is stereo as well, so, so we will get that. I will skip over that. But skip again, it. as I said before, you can see your choices of room emulation and um, stereo uh, options there. Stereo, yum, yum, so yes. let's try this power amp drive. I wonder if we let's ought to it. go over to a slightly crunchier. Uh, well, I suppose we can get power yeah, let's amp see drive. What it does clean sound. Okay, Everybody's going to go crunch, aren't they? I'm going to turn the reverb down a bit. So you get that, that different kind of harmonic distortion that yeah, you get yeah. when a power amp uh, overdrives. Um, I would imagine that is the kind of tone that you want to add in to supplement more of a gain channel. Well, let's try that then. Uh, well, it's just one more thing to do. And then you've got an EQ over here with, oh, you've, you've even got EQ presets, that's pretty cool. But you've got a four band EQ mm. with a low cut and a high cut as well. Okay, so you've got patches that you can, you know, you can elect to have all different types of cabinet and combinations of EQ stuff saved That's as so settings. Hooligan. And then over in the uh, master settings place, this is where, again, we were changing the reverb that we had on each channel. And then underneath uh, the reverb section, there you've got a bit of uh, some options here about some audio routing, what's gonna play and what's not gonna play when you're basically plugged in. General, uh, are some settings, what have we got here? Show slider values, show randomizers, here we go. And then about is the version that you're on. Always worth uh, with any amp, with any product really, with the USB, just yeah. double check that you've got the latest version. That 
is basically a quick run through of Architect. Let's get a, a drive sound then and mess around with this power amp setting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's just drive some power amp stuff here. Let's see what. Too quickly, sorry, man. man I'm used just to it. Yeah, it's like so uh, how I did with girls back when I was like 18, 20. got some handy uh, EQ presets here that you can just whiz through and decide what you want. A treble boosted sound. Anyway, look, that is um, the Architect software. Super easy to use. You won't need to read a manual for that. Just plug in and go. Uh, and it's free with the, free. yeah, it's just free software that you can use for any of the HT uh, venue range. Or any, sorry, for any of the HT range. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. I think we we're done, aren't we? Yeah. I think we it. are done. Um, so these, I believe, are in stock on the day of launch. So if you've seen something here and you think, oh, I need that, uh, dive on over to the Anderson's Hopefully. website and you can have it tomorrow. You um, happy yeah. days. All right. Well, look, that's it. Don't we are done. done. Uh, thank you so much for joining us for our video yeah. of the day. Did we say please like and subscribe? I think we did Didn't multiple we? times. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it was just says it just here. Look, it says it on there. Yeah. 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 Um, right. Every okay. should say it on there. <laughs> See you. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow.